All praises to the Most High Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai. Shabbat Shalom to my Hebrew brothers and sisters. Another beautiful day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Wanted to come on today, of course, to give the message for the Shabbat. We're going to be talking about becoming all things to all men. Understanding really what that what does that mean to us as we uh, interact with other nations, of course, um, because, you know, we know that we are different and we know that. Yahweh Shai only came to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We know that. So, when Paul said, I become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Who, who is he talking about? Who are he? Who are these people that he's going to become all things? Who? So that's what we're going to get in today because we, we interact with people. We work with different people from different nations. We come in contact with people from different nations. We, t we have businesses dealings with people from different nations. So we need to define what exactly Paul is saying here in this scripture, becoming all things to all men. Now we know that Paul letters are directed, of course, to Israelites. We know that to the Israelites. However, there are scriptures that are related to all men, as the Bible tells us, to live in peace with all men. You definitely want to live in peace with all men as much as possible as it lieth within you to live in peace with all men. Whether they are of our nation or not, living in peace with all men is exemplifying wisdom. Now, that doesn't mean that we have to be friends with them. That doesn't mean we have to succumb to them. That doesn't mean that we have to embrace them like we embrace our own people. And that's a matter of fact because the Lord told us to love our neighbors. Our neighbors are those that are in our nation. Now, you have heathen nations. People of other nations. So we have to get an understanding of how does the Most High and His Son, Yahweh Shai, want us to be able to relate to them according to 1 Corinthians chapter 9 with Paul's sayings. So we're going to get into it. So we want to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And I think I want to start um, because First uh, Corinthians chapter nine, verse eighteen is talking about uh, Paul is declaring, of course, you know, him not abusing his power that he know he have his power in the gospel. You know, a lot of people abuse their power. Let's read it. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 18 says, What is my reward then? Verily that, when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. Now, he had to lay this down because many other people, of course, were getting into what? Filthy lucre. Which is... You know, having a lust for money. That is what this is saying right here. Having a lust for money and abusing their power to be able to share the gospel the right way. Share the gospel the right way. 
the correct way. Caring for souls. That's the correct way of sharing the gospel. So when we see these scriptures here, we understand that Paul want to do the right thing. He always, you know, had a heart to do the right thing. Verse 19 says, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. So he became a servant to all so he can gain more. More of the Spirit. More of whatever it is that the Lord want him to, to gain. Okay. Let's go a little further here. So that he can be an effective servant of the Lord rather to bring edification to the body of Christ. But he's making sure that he doesn't abuse his power. So we are talking about becoming all things to all men that we might win some. Okay. Save some. That's what the scripture said. Let's keep on going. First Corinthians now, chapter nine. Now we in verse 20. He said. Until the Jews. I became as a Jew. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul is saying this because he's typically, of course, not a Jew. He's a Hebrew Israelite, but he's not a Jew because the only people that are Jews are from the tribe of Judah. So he's right in saying this. Unto the Jews, I became a Jew, All right? Because each 12 tribes are different. You have to know that. These 12 tribes are different um, in, as it relates to, let's just say, I want to say culture, but I don't want to say culture because... Okay, you have the tribe of Benjamin. You have the tribe of Judah. You have the tribe of Levi, of course. All of the 12 tribes, right? The 12 tribes of Israel. We, we know them, right? Okay, so what we have to do is look at it this way. The darker race of Levi, the Levitical priesthood, of course, Judah and Benjamin. We we kind of have the same darker complexion. Now, when you get to the other so like the other tribes of Israel, they they're a little bit more, you know, uh, bright skinned, light skinned rather. That's why it says what uh, Ephraim or something. My people are, are like a cake unturned because they had they they see our nation mixed with other. Uh, nations, of course, and by their father, they dec declared their pedigree. So that means that, you know, their father, you know, is an Israelite. OK. But some people just have the complexion of their skin is more like I won't even say light skin. Let's just use a, a lighter brown. But Judah, Benjamin and Levi, we are of the darker and we are not ham of the darker, darker, darker race of people. But we are Judah, Levi, and Benjamin. Okay? But there's a distinction because Judah is the lineage that Christ came through. Judah is the lineage that Christ came through. Which is a Jew. All right? So when Paul was declaring his pedigree, he said a Benjamite, an Israelite indeed, an Israelite indeed from the what? Tribe of Benjamin, not from the tribe of Judah. Even though we are, are Israelites, Paul is from the tribe of Benjamin. So he said to us, those of us that we know that we're Judah, and some people, you know, like they have the question, well, how do you know you Judah? How do you know? Are you just saying that? How do you know that you are Judah? Well, you will know them by their spirits, <laughs> by the spirit. <laughs> so, you know, 
And then you have to look at the culture. You know, some of us have family that are Benjamites, you know, we dark of the same dark race, but the culture is different. Jamaicans are different from the tribe of Judah that's here in America. There is a distinction. There is that distinction. We're different from, not different as far as our, our heritage, nationality, because we all are Israel. But, you know, you look at the people here, our nation here in America. Okay, we have different, let's just say, characteristics from Haitians, which are the Levites. But we still all one people. Just like the Bible make a distinction of Moses heritage. Everybody have a heritage of where they came from. Everybody have a lineage. He set up the, the most high set up the, the 12 tribes of Israel. So there are 12 different nations of people, but we're still one. And we're still going to go through the gates of Jerusalem together. 12 different gates. Because we are required to still keep the commandments, the laws and statutes of the most high so that we can enter into the gates. So I had to break that down for a minute. So back to first Corinthians chapter nine, verse 20 unto the Jews, I became a Jew. Paul is saying here. So he, you know, you around us and everything. You see what we eat, what we like and how we handle business, how we relate, how we have, uh, uh, how we're being rather hospitable to our guests. So he is saying, all right, the way you take care of your business and uh, I'm going to be, be just like you. If I'm in your city, if I'm in your town, if I'm dealing with you, I'm going to show you that I can respect your culture. I can respect and be a part and do like you do. If I'm around you for the time that I'm around you. He said, again, unto the Jews, I became a Jew. That means something. That I might gain the Jews. Right? So he's wanting to use this scenario to help us understand he's at, he's on a mission. Paul is on a mission right here. He's just not saying that to the Jews, I became a Jew and I'm going to get into every sin that they do. Because, you know, there's sin in every culture of people. So he said to the Jew, I became as a Jew to the Jews. I became as, as, you know, like, just like the, the, uh, excuse me, the fake Jews in Jerusalem. They're using the ish pertaining to. All right. So Paul is like, okay, in order for me to win my people back, Unto the Lord to know that they're Israel, I'm going to become as a Jew. The Jews that I want to reach, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to become as a Jew. I know I'm not a Jew, but I want to become as a Jew because I want to save them. I want, to, I want them to see that Christ came to save the whole house of Israel, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So there's some things that he's going to maneuver his way in around them. So that he can get the gospel in the gospel of Christ in. He said that I might gain the Jews. He said to them that are under the law. As under the law. OK. Now the Bible talks about the law. How we should use the law. We don't want to be under the law. But there are people that are really dedicated to put themselves totally under the law. The law is good if a man use it lawfully. We want to obey and keep the law. But there are some people that have totally put themselves under the law. And they don't want to use or they don't have any understanding, understanding rather, Salaki, about the grace of the Most High. So they still keep the sacrificial system under the law. There are people that are still slaying animals and other things, the dietary laws, of course. 
Uh, we want to be able to o- obey the law, but not live under the law to be condemned by the law, to be judged by the law. So Paul said to them that are under the law as as under the law that I might gain them that are under the law. Because his ultimate goal is to help them to see that you don't want to be under the law. You want to obey the law, but you don't want to be under the law. Because if you're under the law, then you're going to be judged by the law, which is death for your sins. Because you don't haven't believed in the grace that Yahweh Shai came to give us. And that's a, that was a big problem in the uh, early church, of course. No one wanted to believe in Yahawashai, the uh, Israelites. They knew that they were Israelites, but they did not want to believe that Christ came to bring them redemption, redemption to save them. That's not what they wanted to believe. And you have people like that today in, in the faith. Our Jews uh, in our heritage, the Jews in our heritage, our brethren, no matter what you tell them, they still do not want to believe that Christ came to redeem it, to redeem them. They just use the scriptures, uh, the most high Yahweh alone. When you hear them say alone. Because they use the scripture that there is no other savior. Um, And they've been taught that way. And the spirit can't get through to them like Paul is trying to get through to them. So Paul is saying, I'm going to become, I'm going to be under the law. As if I'm under the law, as if, as if, what did it say? To them that are under the law, as under the law. That I might gain them that are under the law. And I'm going somewhere with this. Because we got to get to dealing with the uh, heathens around us. And how to relate to them. And how do we be as they are. As we're going to see Paul say be as. See? As. Not become what they are, but as. And not involving in their sins, but as. As they do. We'll get to that part, Salakia. We're going to get to that part. Let's go a little further. Let's go a little further here. Salakia. So, verse 21 says, To them that are without the law, See, there are people that are without the law to keep the hope, the commandments, laws and statutes. He say, as without the law. There are people that felt like because we had grace, they can do anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. Paul dealt with it all. The Most High says nothing new under the sun. He said to them that are without the law, as without the law. So he got to reach the ones that feel like they can do anything because they have grace now. And they don't need the law. They just totally, you know, the Bible said that Christ came to fulfill the law. Right. Not to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. There's some good things in the law. If a man use it lawfully. Because God is his law. So he give us the law, statutes and commandments to obey. But some people, when it comes to certain. Uh, parts of the law, like the dietary law, the sacrificial law. And the judgment of the law, people misuse and abuse it and misunderstand it. So Paul is saying even them that are without the law, that feel that they have so much grace that they can keep doing what they're doing. He's like, he's he got to become as them that are without the law so that he can gain them. But he put in parentheses right here. Let's read 21 again. To them that are without the law as without the law. He's going to act like he's without the law too. Being not without the law to God, but under the law of Christ. He made a distinction. He had to set it right. He made a distinction. Not being without the law. He said being not without the law to God. Knowing God knows his heart that he's not without the law to obey the law. But under 
the law of Christ. There is a difference to being under the law of Christ because we know that Christ came for, to fulfill the law. And in him, we obey him because we love him. That is the difference. That I might gain them that are without the law. So he's on a mission. You got to distinguish situations in your life when you're around people. Whether it's our nation or other nations and those that want to cleave to our nation. Because the Bible says that we are the light of the world. So we have to show forth the praises of him that sent us. Because we are the light of the world. Verse 22 said, to the weak I became, Salakia, to the weak became I as weak. Yeah. The Bible tells us to comfort those wherewith with the same comfort that we has been comforted with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It also tells us to bear one another burden. And it also tells us that we are to entreat our brethren that are weak and that have fallen. Those that, that are strong in Christ are to bear the infirmities of the weak. We, we, we have to bear the infirmities of our brethren around us. Meaning that, yeah, they, they're in sin or they're doing something or they've gone, they're going through a trial that's really heavy. We have to bear that for them in, in the ways that Christ tells us to and for the amount of time that he tells us to, okay? It's real serious business when you're dealing with the Most High, His Son, Yahweh Shah Christ, and bearing one another burden. He said, to the weak I became as weak that I might gain the weak. I am made all things, he said, to all men that I might by all means save some. So with this scripture, is Paul just talking about the Israelites? Of course, if you're going to become weak, he's talking about the own brethren, our own brethren. But he said that I might by all means all means save some. Okay. He's talking about his brethren. So we got to make the, the, the distinction. Verse 23 says, and, and this I do for the gospel's sake that I might be partakers thereof with you. All right. Cause he wish he was a curse for his kinsman's sake. Scripture tells us that. Let's go to another scripture. Now we're going to deal with the, uh, the aspect of the world as far as not doing what they, what they're doing. But becoming all things to all men that our light should shine, that we may win some to understand who we are, that we are the most highest chosen people. Okay? See, we are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. We are the real Jews. We have to live a life set apart. It has to be a difference. We can't dress like the world. We can't act like the world. We have to be set apart so that we can show forth the praises of him that sent us and let our light so shine that men will see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. We may be around heathens. Heathens sometimes become, uh, they fall up under, what is it? Judaism. Because some heathens really, they are tired of the world. They raise their, their children in Judaism. I'm not talking about the fake Jews either. I know they're doing that too. But I'm talking about over here in America. I've met some heathens from other nations that they fell up under totally Judaism. 
They want to live holy. They want to keep the Torah. They want to raise their children in holiness. I've seen it. So, the, you know, and the, if they are doing that, and hopefully they under elite, under the Israelite leadership of somebody that, you know, they can learn from because, you know, if they're under someone that's not of Israel, not an Israelite, you know, the most I can use whom he want, but I'm just saying. If, if they're going to follow it, hopefully they're following it the right way. And if they recognize that we are Israel, we are Israel. That's first. As far as relation here on earth to recognize the most high's real people, his chosen people, real chosen people in the earth, Israelites, so-called black people, the 12 tribes of Israel and everyone else. But there are some that want to cleave because they see the light. That's why you got people in Pentecostal holiness, heathens, you know, they, they're raising their children according to Pentecostal, according to apostolic. You know, they want to dress a certain way. They don't allow their women to wear uh, pants. They're very modest in the way they dress. The men's. I've seen some of them that wear their beards. It's a, they know that it's a commandment. So Paul is saying there's just things that we have to do in this world because we in our land, the land of our captivity. But there are things that we have to do, you know, nothing sinful. Nothing. We're not talking about nothing sinful. We're talking about business wise. We're talking about communication wise. We're talking about levels where you have to communicate. You have to deal with other nations human relations that's what i want to say human relation you have to have human relation so we get to romans chapter 1 verse 5 it says by whom have by whom we have received grace and apostleship for the obedience to the faith among all among all nations among all nations for his name Christ's name among who are ye also the call of Yahweh Shah Christ. He's talking about us. Verse seven to all that be in Rome, beloved of Yahweh, call to be saints, grace to you and peace from our father and our Lord Yahweh Shah. Now, let me get another scripture. That's one area where I want to go. That's the distinction. That's the distinction. Let's get the King James Virgin. Okay, so let's go to... Okay, so when we get to... Matter of fact, let's just go to... Acts chapter 22, verse 28. And the chief captain answered with a great sum of, with a great sum obtained I this freedom. And Paul said, but I was free born. <laughs> okay, so we, we want to understand that Paul was a citizen of Rome. And he said, of course, when he was in Rome, he do as the Rome do. Whatever the Rome, Romans did, that's when that's what he did as far as citizenship. So we have to make sure we understand that. Okay. He just had the citizenship. But he did not partake in other men's sin. That's what he distinguished in here. What we were reading. He did not partake in other men's sins. But as far as citizenship, that's what I want to touch on. If you have a job. Or a company, a business, or wherever you your occupation is, whatever is your occupation, you do as they do, as far as 
the business side of the qualification or the job qualifications, wherever you are at. If we in England right now, England do things different. Salaki, of course, they have a whole economic system that is just totally different from America. So we don't do what they do over there. We are different here in America. So we have to follow the guidelines of which America has for their citizens. Not the citizens of Asia, not the citizens of Europe. We have to fall up under what we are given here as far as what's legal. Um, some things is debatable because, you know, uh, a lot of nations, of course, have done wrong. And so we have to have the judgment of the Lord to help us to get through. Get through, rather, the, un the unrighteous policies of our heathens, as the book of Daniel talks about. But when we are in Rome, we do as Rome do. Paul said that for, for a reason. Salakia, because you, we have to use, we have to have wisdom in this life. Their customs are not our customs. We know what our customs are. That's why, you know, there is a separation from church and state because people have their own faith. The significant lesson or teachings that is co I'm conveying here, of course, is being able to adapt to different cultures is something that the Bible tells us to do in wisdom. You don't become them. You don't desire or anything of the heathen. Scripture tells us that. Do not desire to be like the heathens. Don't desire to do or be anything like them. But in your mind, you know who you are. You know who you are. And so you have to adapt. We have to adapt to different cultures Based on the scriptures. No one takes or change our faith. We have to be in it. For our own salvation. Be in the truth for our own salvation. We don't adjust it, change it, alter it or anything. Whatever is wrong in a certain environment. That we have to, you know, adapt to or live around, you know, because many of us, again, we're in the land of our captivities. We have jobs, company, business that we have to interact, of course, with the heathens. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked, whoever they may be, as far as many of them are still wicked and evil, don't want anything uh, to do with our nation as far as doing the right thing. You could be a heathen, but you can do the right thing. You could do the right thing, make the right decisions. You could be civil. Be civilized in the decisions that you make, you know, when you are going to apply for something. You expect for people to be civilized. Have some decorum. Have some intelligence. Have some professionalism. When we are in these settings and environments, you know, it, it is so crucial to carry your, the spirit of the Lord with you while you're there. You know, I don't know if you're able to have devices, but some type of way you need to have those prayers already laid up. Those scriptures already laid up inside of you. If you're able or allowed to have devices, then you need to be prayerful. And while you are in Rome captivity, do as the Romans do. It's a psychological thing. 
And if you don't have enough wisdom to do that, because the Bible have already told us to live in peace with all men, you know, shod our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Because the Bible talks about giving you peace in the midst of your enemies. That can only come from the most high. There don't have to be wars between thee and thy enemy. Everybody, all of us are not out here fighting. Now, we just saw recently what happened. Yes, that was uh, a big brawl down there in Alabama. That's a big brawl, okay? You know, our nation had to defend themselves. You know, just some points, you know, we just got to say when right is right and wrong is wrong. You, you just can't go jump on one man and think there's not going to be consequences when their brethren or sisterin are around like they could have killed that brother. OK, this is real talk. So no one should be taken up for a nation of people that didn't want to obey the 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 law or what was going on at the dock. You're blocking the dock. OK, you, you, you want to be above the law, but you're blocking the by blocking the dock. So you, then you get our nation come out there that's in charge of all of that. And you now you want to take him down because you don't want to move your boat from the dock. You want to be above everyone that's there. And then when you see he's our nation, a so-called black man. Now you really want to go out there and throw down. There's just consequences. And if you don't live in peace with people, that was a prime example that when you stir up strife, you will get strife back. And it goes both ways. We have to be very careful. If you're not going to if you're in a certain situation and you're not going to uh, abide by their ordinances. If you're not going to abide by the laws or the ordinances of a certain town, county, city, building. I don't care what type of business establishment it is. Just leave. Just leave. Your peace, your, your peace inside of you is worth more than anything. Your protection that the Most High is granting you. Because... David even prayed a prayer like that. Lord, if I have caused any of these things on that have come upon me because he was going through some trials, let my enemies overtake me, let them overthrow me. But if I have not done anything to these people, overthrow my enemies. And that's how we live. If we walk in peace with all men, because even being Hebrew Israelite, you know, we really get up. To, we just got some things that we know in scripture how the heathens are. They are our enemies. But there are some of them that the Most High will use for his glory. So we have to make that distinction. And we will recognize that because the Spirit will help you to know what the Lord is doing. Don't blow or mess up or tear down what the Lord is doing. We in the land of our captivity. The Bible said perhaps they may have compassion. Some of them, some of them. We're not looking for compassion from those that are wicked and evil. You have heathens that are baffled about slavery and prejudices and racism. They are just baffled. They don't understand where, where that kind of hate come from. Where did it came from? They, don't, they didn't teach their children to do that. So when they see it out on TV or social media and, and all on the news, so you have heathens that are embarrassed, as the Bible said, that Esau would be ashamed. Not just Esau, other heathen nations as well. Moab, Ammon, Philistia, Philistines. All of these nations that have heathens in them and they're wicked, they are ashamed. The people that don't want to be like that are ashamed. So, you know, the message is becoming all things to all people. Perhaps the Lord can do something in their life. We hear to lift up, encourage our people, edify our people and let the Lord do his work in redeeming Israel and bring Israel back to the fold. 
we have to be brought back to the fold. We got to reach our people. But while we in Rome, we do as Rome do. It's very important. You don't want to miss the Lord. You don't want to never miss what the Most High is doing. That could be uh, very detrimental to your life. Because you, you're not, we're not supposed to go around starting strife. Paul never started strife. I don't see one scripture where Paul started strife with the heathens. I don't see it. Now, I'm going to tell you what he did do, along with John the Baptist and all the other apostles. If you came on their territory, oh yeah, you got the smoke, as they call it. You got the smoke from the scriptures. You were just tore down from the scriptures if you came on the Israelite territory in the Bible. Even if we had to go, uh, our nation, even Yahushai and the disciples had to go before the judges, the rulers of Rome. They had boldness and they weren't afraid. They were very austere men of the Most High that are laid down to you. Because that was, that was our defense. That's all we have. The gospel is our defense. That's why Paul said the gospel is our defense. And we're supposed to be in defense of the gospel. And we're supposed to contend for the faith. But again, as some of the, the brethren and sisters say, you know, you go to work on those plantations. That's why we have to aspire higher. You know, we have to have income and it's, it, it gets hard in this land of our captivity because they fight and fight and fight against us. You want to build a house? They fight against you. I just recently experienced that in the process. Then you have to go do all, everything all over again, wherever, you know, it, the municipal buildings, uh, the business centers for your business. You're getting licensed for your business. There's just always red tape. But I will say there's favor. Because once the Lord reveal who you are and give you that favor and put it in the king's heart. The, the Bible said the king's heart is in the hands of the Lord. And he turns it whatsoever way he wither. Hallelujah. So with that, that means that the most high will give you favor in the king's heart, in the king's eye, like he did with King Cyrus. And King Cyrus, the Lord dealt with his heart, and he let Israel go back and build the temple, build the walls of Jerusalem. He was a heathen, but the Lord called him his anointed. So what I'm saying is that in this land of our captivity, we have to live the life, let our light so shine, of course. But you also have to do the things necessary. Now the Lord will let you know what's righteous and what's not righteous in these laws of this land right here. <laughs> He'll deal with it if it's wrong. You will come out on the winning side if someone is trying to overthrow you. Because see, the Lord have purpose of for, for actually for what you're doing. There's a deeper, higher dimension purpose that Heathens and people that are carnal, they don't understand why the Lord is telling you to do some things. Why is he putting you a certain place? Why is he opening up this door for a job or a business? Everything is about the kingdom. Like Paul said, that I might by all means win some. Scripture say he don't even take pleasure in the death of the wicked. And that could just be our nation. Because the Bible says all souls are his. So we have to be very careful. But we ought to know to never trust our enemies and that this gospel was preached for us, sent for us. The whole book, Yahweh came in the volume of the book for us to save Israel from their enemies. We know that these heathens are our enemies. We know that. But in addition to that, the Lord has to sh show us what to do, how to maneuver the mindset that we are supposed to have. In the midst of them. That's why we have to reach our people. A lot of our nation get caught up. How? They won't listen. 
They don't know their Israel and to not trust their enemies. So they just la 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 la. Going over there having sleepovers at the house. You remember the story? The young lady was killed. Nobody know what happened to her. La 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 la. Round your enemies. Scripture already t- told told us never trust thy enemies. As I rush surely with their wickedness. It's gonna happen. They're gonna always be like that. Now you deal business wise, professionally. You don't take people home and put them in your heart. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. Desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. That's in Israelite and these heathen nations. Our nation, our own hearts. We got to be careful. That's why our hearts have to be renewed, be regenerated by the power of the Holy Spirit. We have to be renewed. We have to be regenerated. So what you think about the heathens? Do you think the heathens heart are regenerated to treat you right and make the right decisions? That should let you know right there. That should let you know right there. Because if you take it for granted, then you will pay for it. You will pay for it. You don't want to take the Lord's word for granted. So I wanted to touch on that because. See, the Bible said that Yahweh was quick in understanding. Quick in understanding. You have to pray for wisdom. In this walk of life, you have to pray for wisdom. Everything is not as it appears. It's not a, it's not as it appears. I'm trying to tell you. So with that, you have to use the wisdom. That's why Paul had that wisdom because Israelites were scattered everywhere. Like a speckled bird looking different ways and you know, <laughs> the complexions are different. We don't really technically know. So when you get around somebody that looked like a heathen, they could be someone that the most high is surely using and uh, in their lives. And just because they look like a heathen, they may not be. May not. You have to give that the benefit of the doubt. Because, the you know, when people serve the Lord by the spirit, you will know them by their spirit, not by anything else. You will know them by their fruits that they bear. The spirit bear witness. So you don't want to just, you know, and then, you know, the Bible says, though Esau come crouching, come crouching. These heathen nations all around the enemies come crouching. What does that mean? Come crouching to befriend you. Come crouching to be nice to you. The Lord is telling us to be careful of that. But while you in Rome, you do as Rome do. You you take care of business as if you are a, a Roman citizen. Okay. Go through the protocols. If you hit a roadblock because the heathens trying to shut you down. You got to take that to the Lord in prayer. Because not everything that is lawful in America is expedient. And we know that. And we have to be careful of that. But the Lord wants us to have wisdom. While we are in the land of our captivity and we have awakened and bethink ourselves. To come out of sin and live right for the most high Yahweh. We've already came out. We don't need to go back. To doing things our own way and to collaborating and fitting in with the land of our captivities 
uh, celebration and dainties. Eating their food and customs, the abominable food that comes from a pig, unclean seafood. You know what they are. Anything that doesn't have scales and fins is unclean. We don't do as they do. As Paul was saying in that scripture, just because he said that he become all things to all men, that he might win some, that did not mean to be partakers of their sins. You have to draw the line. We have to draw the line. So that is what I wanted to um, come on to bring forth this message, of course, that the Most High was stirring in my spirit because all throughout the day, your mind, at least my mind, is on the Lord all day. So when I'm around uh, different nationalities of people I'm thinking about my heritage and I'm thinking about how I'm not going to compromise my faith and the faith of my heritage it's important So we want to be mindful of that. Because if you don't have your mind on the most high, your how all day long. You will succumb to what this world is all about. See, America make you feel like that's why they make people feel that they can do anything. Rather, let me finish that sentence. That's why you have the uh, alphabet organization. They want people to feel that it's okay to live that lifestyle. They want people to feel that way. And they'll, now, don't get me wrong. You know, if the Most High is not putting judgment on someone, because he, the Lord gives people repentance. Now, you have evil people that want to do things to people that live like that. But if the Lord is not giving judgment, you can't do nothing. So that's why they have the alphabet laws to protect people. If the Lord is not bringing judgment on it, why, why would he want, you know, there are evil people out here, period. If the Most High is not uh, bringing evil upon them. Then why would somebody want to bring evil upon them themselves? Even with our Hebrew brothers, listen, the laws in this nation, there's some laws that set for our defense. Don't get it twisted. Because if it weren't, our brethren would not be on the corners because we're in the land of our captivity. So there's a separation between state, church and state, and there's also the First Amendment of freedom of speech. So they can't stop them. You see, so why would we not appreciate that part of the laws in this land of our captivity that, you know, many of us are awakened because of them being on the corner, because of the First Amendment. Many of our nation. Yes, the Lord had to do that so that we can have freedom of speech, even on this broadcast right here today or any broadcast or platform that we do on social media. Freedom of speech is all on social media. We should appreciate freedom of speech. We should appreciate the First Amendment. Yeah. Because that is a part of, of how the Most High is going to bless us. That's how he is going to reach his people.
So he put it in the heathen. Don't think the Lord don't use heathens. The Most High use heathens. Mm-hmm. He used heathens for his weapons of chastisement, and he used heathens for his scepter of righteousness. We have to know the difference and appreciate the difference and let the Lord do his work. The Lord is the only one that can uh, bring us through, overturn things and give us favor for what we need in life. And whomever the Lord uses, whomever he uses, guess what? They're the ones that the Most High chose for a particular reason to touch their heart. We're talking about the heathens. To make a certain decision like he did with King Cyrus. It's something about them. And the Lord said that Cyrus was his, King Cyrus was his anointed King Cyrus was his anointed. Let's look at a scripture here in Romans chapter. Let's see. Before I get off the broadcast, we're about to finish on up. Romans chapter 12. And let's, let's just start at, let's see, let's just start at verse 3, right. Paul said, For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as Yahweh has dealt to every man the measure of faith. That's important because we need to have a, a sense of humility in this in this land of our captivity. We got to be careful. All right. That is definitely important. He said in verse four, for as we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office. And we got we have to discern that. So we being many are one body in Christ and every one member, one of another. We need one another. That's basically what he's saying here. Having then gift differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of our faith. Our ministry, let us wait on our ministering or he that teaches on teaching. So this is this is great edification. Help us to know and put us in the right state of mind of how we can differentiate and discern what the Lord is doing in our lives as an individual. An individual. Yes. So the most high Yahweh bless everyone. I pray the message have been a blessing to you that your lives have been increased through the edification of the broadcast. Know our place. We have to know our place in this, in this society, in the land of our captivity. We have to know our place. Know what the Lord is doing in our lives, what he wants us to do. And some of the things that he, places that he wants us to go, he wants us to be for, what, for however amount of time. We have to know who we are as an individual and know the will of the Lord. The Bible said, know the perfect will of the Lord, that you may know the perfect will of Yahweh. How he's maneuvering, maneuvering you in this land of our captivity. Very important. Know our places. Mind our business and let the Lord work for us in favor so he can give us justice, judge us right in the midst of 
the land of our captivity with heathens and the wickedness that's all around us. Our trust is in the Most High Yahweh that will break the backs of pride from anybody. He will break the backs of pride of the wicked. And that's in any nation. So the Most High Yahweh will bless you, keep you, lift up his countenance upon you, and give you peace. Until next time, Shalom.